In this video, I am going to be once again talking about inflammation and how inflammation affects your blood vessels, which ultimately affects your entire body. Mainly, we're going to be talking about it from a heart attacks and strokes perspective, but it's very important to know that blood vessels go everywhere in your body, anywhere in your body, whether your eyes or your toes, you have blood vessels going there. So chances are, if you have unhealthy blood vessels, you may have symptoms in that part of your body. So Poor blood vessels in your brain means strokes and potentially brain fog. Poor blood vessels in your heart obviously means heart attacks. Poor blood flow down to your legs means peripheral vascular disease, you know, diabetics getting legs chopped off and things like that. So what we're gonna be talking about is arterial health today. I do a lot of discussions there and I try to bust the myth that cholesterol is not the reason for heart attacks and strokes despite what we've been taught for many decades now and it's inflammation is the root cause. So if you don't know me, my name is Dr. Philip Oop. I am a functional medicine doctor, and I'm trying to help you understand the root causes of your illnesses and how to prevent them. So on this diagram on the TV behind me is the diagram of a blood vessel that is significantly diseased. So you've got your muscular layer all the way on the outside, and then you've got your endothelial layer on the inside. And as you can see, the blood vessel um, lumen, or where the blood flows, the tube is actually quite narrowed, right? The endothelial wall is supposed to go all the way down here. And what you can see is you can see cholesterol, which I just said isn't the problem, but what cholesterol is, the reason why it's found at the scene of the crime red-handed is because in, uh, cholesterol has crash landed into the blood vessel wall, but cholesterol was never intended to crash land into the blood vessel wall. So why has it landed there? It's landed because inflammation has damaged the in, inner lining of the arterial wall. And once it's damaged, then the cholesterol can seep in. It's acting almost like a band-aid or a pothole filler. And instead, since the inflammation never goes away because you keep eating cheeseburgers and french fries and, and gluten, the inflammation continues, which means the cholesterol continues, and now you have a feed-forward cycle that eventually ends up narrowing the artery wall. Once you narrow the artery wall, now you're at risk for heart attacks and strokes. Now, most people believe that heart attacks and strokes actually come from the, the narrowing of this artery wall, and that's not actually true. A heart attack or a stroke is a sudden event that you have, um, you go from arteries and blood flowing to 0% blood flow immediately. And the reason why that happens isn't because this collapses to zero in, in over time from cholesterol. Actually, what happens is as this cholesterol builds up, it makes this, this cap, and this cap gets weak and once it gets weakened, all it takes is one heartbeat. And remember, this artery is always expanding and contracting every time a, a heartbeat goes through it. So when a heartbeat comes through and it tries to contract down, all it takes is a little split. If this cracks at all, then what happens is you now have um, tissue exposed. And when tissue is exposed, your body's really good at stopping blood flow, right? Because you don't want to bleed out, you want to die. So anytime you have a crack in the inside lining of the blood vessel, it immediately forms platelets, and these platelets form a clot. And this blood vessel goes from, um, I guess this one's about 30 or 40% open to 0% open immediately. It is not from the slow narrowing of this. It is actually from an immediate clot forming, blocking the artery. Now you're having a heart attack or a stroke, and it's too late to prevent it. So wait. Uh, cardiologists do when they go in to look at the blood vessels of the heart, they squirt dye around, and what they're doing is they're telling you how wide this lumen is, how open it is, which means the rest of it is diseased. But the, the narrowing may cause chest pain, but that's not really what causes the, the heart attack. It's actually, heart attacks come from arteries that are actually more open because they have softer plaque, more vulnerable plaque. It said that some, the arteries that are greater than 50% open are actually the ones that are at risk. The ones that are really narrow down to 20 and 10%, they may give you a lot of chest pain, but they're so, they're so hardened that they usually don't cause heart attacks. But that, that's, that's minor detail, that's more for med students. So the way I explain cholesterol in the artery wall is I use the metaphor of a highway. If you have a damaged highway with a bunch of potholes, that's your inflammation, you're damaging the highway and there's so many potholes, it's, it's difficult for cars to be on the road. Well, if a car hits a pothole and blows a tire and crash lands on the side of the road, is it the car's fault for crashing? No, it's the pothole's fault for crashing. That's how you explain cholesterol. Cholesterol is the cars and Mack trucks on the highway, but they're not the ones that are crashing. It's not, or they are crashing. It's not their fault. It's the potholes in the road that's causing it. So inflammation is causing the potholes. Cholesterol is showing up to try to fill the potholes, and that's your, your, your car's crash landing on the side of the road and just accumulating because of all the traffic from the damaged potholes. 
So this is the, the underlying um, idea and theory behind why this atherosclerosis or thickening of the arteries happen. And in my other videos, I've gone over all kinds of inflammatory testing that you can do to determine if this is even happening without even doing any other testing. You can find this underlying process just with simple blood tests, but most conventional doctors aren't looking. And just as a quick rundown of inflammatory markers, there's HSCRP, there's LPPLA2, there's myeloperoxidase, microalbumin, uh, F2 isoprostanes, oxidized LDL, ADMA, SDMA. Has your doctor checked any of those? If so, you have no idea if you're at risk. If you got the checkbox because your cholesterol and blood sugar were okay, you have done very little to investigate inflammation. So in this talk, I'm gonna go a step further and say, yes, we're still talking about atherosclerosis. We're still talking about artery inflammation, but actually what we're talking about is a device that we use in our office. It's called the Max Pulse Test. And this Max Pulse Test requires, it's really simple. You put your finger in a machine, just like a, um, you've probably seen the pulse oximeters that, that measure your oxygen saturation. You put your finger in a machine that's connected to a laptop and you sit there quietly for three minutes. And what it's doing is every time your heart beats, it's measuring, let me pull up a good picture for you. Here's one over here. It, what it's measuring is it's measuring the, the blood circulation through your fingertip. So every time your heart beats, which you may not know is your heart is not the one that's responsible for pumping blood all around your body. When your heart beats, it initiates the blood pumping around the, heart, the body and it does get blood out obviously, but every artery in your entire body is a muscle and pumps with the heartbeat. So what it has to do is it has to expand and open and allow the blood into it but then it compresses down, just like the heart. The heart has to relax, allow blood into it, and then it pumps down, relax, open, just like a mop. You gotta dump it in the water, get it good and mixed up, then you squeeze it down, then you use it, right? So that's the same thing that's happening in the artery. And that's what you see here. When the heart beats, the artery opens up and accepts that blood, then it squeezes down on it real hard, and that's what you see here. And then there's this fancy reverberation or aftershock for the, ar for the artery to reset, getting ready for the next heartbeat. But what happens over time is if you have too much inflammation and damage in that blood vessel, you can see that the waveform actually starts to get damaged over time. So this waveform type one is considered the healthier, the normal wave. But as you go further down, type two, three, four, you can start to see that your, your waveform actually kind of flattens. But your blood vessel still accepted the blood, but then down here, it tried to squeeze and it couldn't squeeze as good. So it almost has to squeeze longer, squeeze twice, before it can reset ready for the next heartbeat. And this tiny little machine that's on your finger can sense these heartbeats. And what it does is over the three minutes, every heartbeat that comes through that blood vessel, it's giving it a score, type one through seven. And then once the machine is done, it gives you a percentage of how many heartbeats landed in type one, how many heartbeats landed in type seven, et cetera. What you want is you want a 100% type one. That means your arteries are healthy. You are most likely eating a clean diet. You are active, you are exercising, you are taking care of your body or you're just really young and haven't had time to damage your arteries yet. But you want a type one and the further you get away from type one, means the sicker and sicker you are and the more at risk you are for heart attacks and strokes. So I've got some examples to show you. And here's an example of one. I've trimmed the report so you only see the part that, that really matters. And so what you see here is it's called the aging vascular health. And you will see that this person is a type one, 100%. And that's why they got the big blue graph grade. The other portion of the test that we find useful is this SNS, which is sympathetic nervous system. That's your fight or flight system. How, how stressed are you? And then you've got your PNS, which stands for your parasympathetic nervous system. That's your rest and digest system. And as you can see, this person, although they've got great arterial health, they actually have a lot of sympathetic nervous system, a lot of fight or flight, and not much rest and digest. So that, that what we will discuss with them is, hey, we need to work on you being stressed and what are you doing to manage those stressors? Because I don't care how healthy you are, how, um, how athletic you are, if you are stressed to the max at all times, you will cook your body. There's a 400 page book sitting on my shelf over here called Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers that talks about all the ways stress cooks your goose. So we will be discussing with this person that yes, your arteries look good, but if this maintains all day long every day for years and years, you will eventually cause disease. Let's go to the next person. So this next person wasn't as lucky and you can see that they scored 100% type two and you can see their dark blue waveform is already starting to change, but they're a pretty relaxed person. So they're nice and rested and de-stressed and they're, they're doing pretty good. They've got a good balance against their fight or flight system but maybe they've been eating cheeseburgers and french fries and damaging their arterial health. Maybe they have a good mental disposition, but they haven't been taking care of their body. They've got inflammation damaging their arteries, right? 
Next person, we're getting worse as you can tell. And so the next person um, is even worse. So this actually breakdown, let me zoom in, see if you can see it. So in this breakdown, this person scored majority type three. They had 38% of their heartbeats were in type three. But look, they're really starting to reach some danger zones. There's 33% of their heartbeats landed in type four, 5% in type five. That is some scary stuff. I do not see many patients in type six and type seven. That's real danger zone activity when your blood vessels are in type six and type seven. So this person is clearly inflamed, clearly has inflammation that is affecting their arterial health. And it's only a matter of time of them rocking this kind of results that will eventually have a heart attack or stroke. So what you may not know is still, no matter what the media talks about, the number one killer of Americans and most people worldwide is still heart attacks and strokes, which is a preventable disease if you're managing your inflammation, if you're managing your health. Cancer is also uh, preventable and reducible via the same means, but that's not here nor there. So let's, let's get further into this person. So this is the worst one I'll show you today as a final example. So this person is showing type four majority, zoom in a little more, type four majority, 86% of their heartbeats land in the type four category. This is real danger zone. Now this person, I already have future tests that they're climbing up the ranks. They are now in type two, not quite to type one, but they're already to type two. But notice down here, it's not highlighted in blue, but down here, they're rocking 13.5% in type six, real danger zone. So that is saying 13, almost 14% of their heartbeats, the blood vessels acted like a type six category. That's scary stuff. So the questions are, how can I fix this? I've got an abnormal max, max pulse. My blood vessels are aging. How can I fix this? The number one thing you need to do is heal your gut, eat nutritious foods, remove inflammatory foods, cut out the glutens, cut out the dairies. Those are the biggest things. And then of course, start reducing your sugar intake. The next thing you need to do for your aging blood vessels is you need to exercise. Now exercise looks different for every person, right? You don't need to go out and join a CrossFit and injure yourself. You need to do whatever you're capable of doing. It doesn't matter if that's just putting your shoes on and walking around the house or if that's walking a block or maybe normal for you is running six miles. You need to do whatever your body can do. I often de-emphasize exercise because the most important thing is to get your body feeling good with proper foods, proper nutrients, removing inflammation. And then once you start to feel good, you have extra energy at the end of the day. Once you have extra energy at the end of the day, then you can go use that energy to exercise. But it is almost impossible to have a type one blood vessel without any exercise. But any movement helps. My general rules of thumb for exercise are uh, two rules. If you exercise, you should be able to do the exact same exercise the next day. If you aren't able to do that, then you did too much. The second rule is you should feel good by the time you're done. So if you do not feel good, it says that you did too much and you overexhausted your body. If you are in a state of inflammation and a state of damage and you're trying to pump more blood through a damaged blood vessel, guess what? Blood vessels get tired too. Last but not least, the thing that pairs with this aging blood vessel test the most is something called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide. So nitric oxide, if we go to our blood vessel screen from the first page, zoom in. Nitric oxide is made by these tiny little cells. These one little cell thick layer on the inside of your artery called the endothelium. The endothelium is the most extensive organ in your entire body because those things go everywhere. It's, it's even more prevalent than your skin. There are more endothelial cells than your skin, which makes sense because endothelium goes everywhere. Skin is only on the outside of you, right? So this endothelial layer is actually an organ system and that endothelium, each cell makes, I don't think you can see this on the screen, but Endo, yep, that's pretty good. The endothelial cell makes nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a gas, but what's unusual about nitric oxide is it's, act, it's actually a hormone. So this cell makes nitric oxide and tells the artery to dilate and relax. So if these cells stop making nitric oxide, what do you think happens? This, the artery slowly starts to collapse and, and, and squeeze down. And this is the pathology for high blood pressure. As you see, well, I guess it's not too obvious in the diagram, but as this inflammation and this cholesterol plaque de develops and builds up, these arterial cells are actually damaged. And when they start getting damaged, they stop making nitric oxide. And hence, this is more of a feed forward cycle. As they stop making nitric oxide, then that artery can't expand and relax. That means it can't contract. Just like the mop metaphor. If you never stop, if you try to soak a mop that's being wrung out, you can't soak it. The water just runs right through it, right? The artery has to be able to relax in order to contract. Nitric oxide is what does that. And what are the primary things that boost nitric oxide? Primarily beets.
yeah, when's the last time you've eaten a beet? I haven't eaten a beet in a while. I like beets, but that's the thing. It's not, they're not the most delicious food and they're not the easiest to cook, but beets are wonderful, whether they're juiced, whether um, you're eating them whole, however you can, beets help nitric oxide. There's a company called Human to the Power of N, or um, Neogenis, they used to be called, and they make these tablets called Neo40. These Neo40 tablets are the, high, the most studied that I've seen and the most powerful as far as getting your body to produce nitric oxide. So Neo40 tablets, if you're not a type one and you wanna restore it, we usually say take two tablets per day, one in the morning, one in the evening, roughly 12 hours apart, and then after the first month, then you can usually go down to one tablet a day, and then by the third or fourth month, you can go to as needed. If you have high blood pressure, you should stay on twice a day, Day. and if you're worried just take it twice a day the only harm is the expense of buying the supplement neo 40 is wonderful and there's really no known overdose that I know of um, and it's wonderful for producing nitric oxide if you're an athlete you've probably seen beat elite and the other beat versions that human to the power of n makes um, so all athletes I recommend before big workouts or even just regular maintenance you can take neo 40 or the beat elites and whatnot so nitric oxide, as a reminder, is extremely powerful. And if you are a type four or really anything below type two, anything below type two, you need more nitric oxide. So hopefully this video is helpful. Um, look for a practitioner that's got a Max Pulse device. We have it here in our office. All of our patients are, um, are tested and we regularly retest, especially if their levels are anything but a type two. Um, please feel free to leave comments, questions. Uh, we try to answer as many of them as we can. So hope this was helpful. Bye guys.